So the last talk before lunch is by Dominic Kirst on synthetic versions of the clean post and post theorem. All right. Uh, thank you, Ambrus, for the introduction. So indeed, in this talk, I will present synthetic proofs of these two theorems, of the Klini post theorem and of Post's theorem, which we developed in joint work with Niklas and Yannick. So to give you a big, uh, bit of background, if you have attended one of the talks um, given by members of our group, so Yannick's first talk or Benjamin's talk or Felix's talk, you might have noticed that we are super excited about synthetic computability. And here's a recap why we are so excited. So in every constructive foundation, every function you can write down is by definition computable. And this gives you very brief definitions of computable notions. What I put here, because I also need that later, is the notion of decidability of a predicate A on the type X, which you can just define as the existence of a Boolean function coinciding with the predicate. And no requirement that this function be computable because it is computable by construction. Similarly, if you have a second predicate B on the domain Y, then A many one reduces to B if there is a function translating between the domains preserving the predicates in both directions. Again, no computability requirement. And why is this super cool? It's super cool because you can do computability theory without diving down to a concrete model of computation. You don't have to manipulate Turing machines or terms in untyped lambda calculus, which gives you extremely compact proofs. For instance, the normal proof that decidability transports back along many one reduction is just function composition and nothing more, no manipulation of Turing machines. So, in general, this leads to a very elegant formalization, for instance, in the calculus of inductive constructions, and then in particular to feasible mechanization. Feasible here really in the sense that it's infeasible, or at least practically it's a lot of work and frustrating work if you want to do this with a concrete model uh, working in a proof assistant like Koch. Now to the downside, and this was already mentioned in Yannick's talk, this works all good if it's about notions that are based on functions, but as soon as, as you look at something like Turing reducibility, which is based on the notion of oracles, there's not a direct recipe how to do these things. And unfortunately, Turing reducibility is a very basic and interesting concept in computability theory, and underlying these interesting properties like Lini Post and Post theorem, and so we were interested in figuring out how this works. And indeed, we have tried this many times and we failed many times over the last years. And then a talk by Andre Bauer came to the rescue. And you have learned this if you attended Yannick's talk, what the solution basically is. So I'll just quickly recap it here. So the point is that you approach synthetic oracle machines on two levels. First, you have the level where you operate on functional relations that are not necessarily computable. And then you have a transformer of these functional relations. So the input is a functional relation on natural numbers to Booleans, and which is considered the oracle. And from this, you compute something. And computing means that you factor, which is then the second level, through computational core. So you also impose that there is a transformer on partial functions, natural numbers to Booleans, which is now the computational content. And you want that this kind of agrees with the operation on uh, relations, which I've written down here abusing a lot of notation. So we identify a functional relation f with its characteristic functional uh, relation. No, if a partial function f with its characteristic functional relation. And then we impose that both computations do the same thing. All right. Then there's one more thing, because still we want to rule out more exotic um, oracle machines. So we also impose that the oracle transformer is continuous in the sense that if on a given oracle the computation terminates on input n with a value b, then this actually depended just on finitely many queries that were um, queried to the oracle. So this means that every other oracle agreeing with the oracle a um, on this finite uh, subset will have the same termination behavior. 
With all these restrictions in place, we rule out all exotic behavior of oracle machines, which we then internalize by assuming some synthetic axiom that tells us that we do the right thing. And the formulation we choose in this talk is just simply assuming an enumeration of all oracle machines. And I will talk later about why we think that this might work. Okay, so having summarized the notion of synthetic oracle machines, we can now finally define um, a notion of synthetic Turing reductions, which is nice to do this today because it's Turing's 110th birthday today. So happy birthday, Ellen. Here's the notion of synthetic Turing reducibility. A Turing reduces to B if there's an oracle machine that on input B computes A. Okay, so now in the rest of the talk, I will have a look at the two theorems that we proved. So first, the cleanly post theorem, which says that there are two predicates, or in general, Turing degrees, which is the equivalence classes of predicates, that are incomparable. So there's no um, reduction in either direction between them. And normally in all these proofs, what you always do is you construct A and B by approximating Boolean sequences that in the limit um, form these predicates. And in every approximation, you make sure that you um, put enough structure in that your result holds. The thing, if you follow, for example, Odi Freddy's textbook, you will see the definition of sigma n and tau n, these sequences, as a defined function. These functions are, of course, not computable because you do some um, checks in between which are not computable. So in our setting, we have no chance to describe them as actual functions in our setting, but instead characterize these approximations with an inductive predicate. So we say, what we write here, n triangle sigma tau, this expresses that sigma and tau express the nth approximation of these sequences. And now I don't give you the definition, I have it on a backup slide if you're interested, but I give you the properties that are important. The properties, the first two here state that basically this behaves like a function, so it is functional, and it's somewhat total in a constructively weaker sense, so we have no chance in proving that for every n we find suitable approximations. This would give us a function, and as I said, there's no chance to get such a function, but we can prove that there are not not exists sequences of this behavior. This shows that these approximations give you um, a functional um, expressivity, and now what we actually want about this construction is that we can clearly diagonalize against the behavior of the nth oracle machine. So we make sure that we never, um, by accident, find an oracle machine transforming A into B or in the other direction. And we make this in the, in the sense that in every even step, we make sure that at a concrete position, the behavior of R of N will differ um, on input A from B. And conversely, in every odd step, we do it in the opposite direction. And if we manage to prove this property, then it's an easy conclusion to derive the cleanly post theorem, because if we were assuming a Turing reduction, for instance, from A to B, this would be the nth Turing reduction in the enumeration, but then we know that we must differ from it at some position. All right, then for the second theorem that we looked at, the post th theorem, which is a connection between the arithmetical hierarchy characterizing predicates on natural numbers with respect to their um, quantifier prefix um, and connecting this hierarchy to iterated Turing jumps. So I quickly explain um, the ingredients. First, how to represent the arithmetical hierarchy. We do this with an inductive predicate classifying predicates on vectors of nature and numbers. And in the base case, we just include all decidable predicates into the lowest level of sigma zero and pi zero. And then in the step, we do a quantifier flip. So for instance, if p is pi one, and we add an existential quantifier, then the result will be in sigma n plus one. Now, for the other, direct, for the other half of this correspondence we are looking at, we first define the Turing jump, which is the Turing jump of A is nothing but the <laughs> self-halting problem of oracles on A and we define the notion of semi-decidability relative to a given um, oracle by 
I'm asking for an Oracle machine that on input Oracle B agrees with A in its termination behavior. And then we can state Post's theorem in a standard textbook formulation. I think this one here is pretty close to Oddi Freddy, but only with the difference. Here now we explicitly assume the excluded middle because so far our proof is using classical logic. And then it says something like, um, you first characterize um, explicitly the levels sigma n plus one because this contains exactly the predicates that are semi-decidable relative to the nth Turing jump of the empty set. And then also the nth Turing jump is complete in sigma n in the sense that you get Turing reductions or even in the case of n greater than zero, you get uh, synthetic many one reductions. Okay, so this is kind of an overview of the two results we did. Um, so let me finish with a quick outlook on which directions we are also looking in. And there are basically three questions. The first one is whether it's actually possible to construct such an enumeration of Oracle machines. Certainly you need to assume some axiom to do this because constructive type theory is pretty agnostic about how the computational behavior of the functions really is. But we have hoped that this might follow from a standard formulation of Church's thesis, maybe involving an argument using Pliny's second algebra, but we are still working on that. Then, although we deem it consistent to assume excluded middle in our synthetic setting, and Yannick talked about this, this has to do with the lack of, for instance, unique choice in the calculus of inductive constructions. We would, of course, find it desirable to find a completely constructive proof and maybe wiggling around with the definition of these of the arithmetical hierarchy will will help there and finally so the Pliny post theorem and post theorem are rather basic results about um, Turing reducibility but now since we are confident that we get the right definition of Turing reducibility it would be a nice project to tackle something more involved like Post's problem regarding undecidable but enumerable um, degrees below the first halting problem, which might work using the priority method by Friedberg and Mutschnik, but maybe also using a priority-free argument a la Cucera. All right, thanks a lot. Um, I was just wondering, um, so there is a version of the arithmetical hierarchy, which is more like, I mean, so the problem of course is that constructively not every formula, uh, arithmetical formula belongs to the arithmetical hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, but there have been attempts by Wolfgang Boer especially to modify the standard definition of the arithmetical hierarchy in such a way that you capture more formulas than just the, the, okay. pre the ones which are in pre-next normal form basically. Um, I, was just I, mean, I was just wondering if you were aware of this. I'm not aware of no, this, so okay. that's, thanks yeah. for the tip. Yeah, okay. It's Buhr? Wolfgang Buhr. Wolfgang Buhr, okay. Yeah. Okay, we will have yeah. a look at that. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Any other question? I can tell the one is very hungry. I can imagine. I'm also very hungry, so I understand it. <laughs> yeah, so maybe we keep the other, yeah? We keep the other questions for offline and thank the speaker again. <laughs>